All right. Looks like I am live. What is up? What is up? What is up? What is up? Sup, 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 What's up, everybody? This is Coil Class Tuesday, 7 p.m. That's when we hold Coil Class. That's it. Coil Class is a series of live videos I do here on this YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. We're running a little late today just because of work, but that's okay. I think we're going to be all right. Um, today we're doing Twisty Little Clapton. So basically that would be a coil named the Reef Coil, which I do have a video for. And the Green Mamba Coil, which, yeah, which we'll do the Green Mamba, which is basically a zippered Clapton. All right. So what is up, everybody? Um, I don't know if this airs too loud or not. That should be better. Okay. So what is up? Sorry I'm late. Sorry I had to start at 7.30, but that's what I had to do. Yes, running a McDonald's is hard work. It's busy per person work. So I'm just straightening up a little bit here, so I'm not a, a, a total effing mess. I'm just a little bit of a mess, okay? Um, to be honest, TVH... These are not going to be as hard as coils in previous videos. I would say these are easier than the last couple videos. So if the last couple videos, the last couple coils were a little rough, this is going to be much easier. These coils are kind of ones that kind of fell into a weird position, and I just have to get them done early in coil class so that when the other coils come up that pertain to these coils, you won't be confused, okay? So it's a good spot for them, but honestly, in my opinion, these coils are easier than a lot of the coils we've been doing in past weeks. So um, these are great beginner coil builds to learn. So that's awesome. Uh, what is up, everybody? I hope everybody's having a good start to their week. I guess I'll just say happy 4th of July right now. I'm having one fucking busy week. Excuse my French, but it's not just a busy week. It's a busy fucking week. I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't even gonna do it to you. I, I wouldn't lie to you. So, here we are. Here we are. We are here. Where are my participants? On a second. Live chat. All right. Participants. Oh, snap. I didn't realize everybody was coming to class today. Damn, we ain't going to miss a beat. Alistair Robinson, what is up? Bassmaster Cube is here. Bobby McGreedy, what's up? Dark Side Coils, Dave Montefero, what is up? Dave and Gore, Daytime Frank, Don Corleone, Grady Moore, Jerry Lawrence, Justin Crabtree, Clayton Von Kludge, Mr. Pebble, Nick Fenton, Perry Jackson, Red Eye Loon, Rick Poe, Sicko Wicko, Stephen A. Can, one, those beans, Trevor is that one person. Vaping Jason and Wayne Dana. What is up, everybody? Anybody I didn't say, you just weren't on my participants list. What is up? Anybody watching that is not chatting. What is up? HB Coils, what's up? Marcius, what's up? What is up, everybody? Man, we got a full house. Big Boy Builds and Reviews, what's up in the UK? Seems as though I have a lot of people watching, right? I don't get no I don't get no analytics. 
Where's my analytics at? Yeah, I have nothing. I got nothing. Who cares, right? I don't care how many people are watching. Even if it's just one, I'm good. All right. What is this? Chat out. Okay. So, let me just get my screen down and we'll start. I'm going to start off with the simpler of the two. I have a video for the reef coil. That's how we're going to start. The reef coil is pretty simple. All right. I don't see a lot of reef coils, and it's probably because they look really cool, but they don't vape really good, and it's very hard to do a lot of cool stuff with them. There's only so much you could do with a reef coil. Usually, stovetop is pretty much it. Um, but kind of like the, the matrix coil, it's a lot like the matrix coil. But kind of like the matrix coil, if you want to wrap it up in a coil and show me how cool it is, do it. I will only do a stovetop, so now you, and only you, will be able. Where is... 35? There's more than 35 in the chat. Okay. Boom, boom. That's good. I got my coffee. That is so good. So, so good. All right. Yeah, there's got to be more than 35. I imagine there is. Forty-one. Okay. Well, I guess I was wrong. All right. All right. Cool. Let's get started. Reef coil. Pretty straightforward. All right. Pretty straightforward. What's up, Philip Wheeler? The alien coil class actually did do a lot. It's actually one of the most, the most viewed coil class is coil class one. That's the most viewed um, by a lot. It's by a lot. Um, alien coil class has done, it's done well. It's definitely over 1K, I think now, I'm not sure. No, 735 views, which is good. But the most is... The most is one with... Um, one th it just says 1,000 views. All right, cool. All right. Let's do it. Reef coil. Reef coil. All right. That's weird that it's only showing 19. There's more than 19 people in the chat right now. What is Pat? Yeah. Okay. You could do a reef coil with any kind of ribbon. Quite honestly... Three and four are going to be the best. What a reef coil is, if nobody ever seen my pre-recorded video. I have reef coil and suka coil in one video. Reef coil is basically just twisted ribbon, twist it to the max, and then you use that as a clapton. It comes out looking very, very cool. It's a very cool looking coil. So that's why I would like to show it to you also because of coils coming up in coil class. It's important to know what happens when you twist a wire too much. All right. So let's do this. Let's use. Hmm. 
Point three. Stainless steel. I wouldn't use nichrome for this. I would not use nichrome. You can. You can. But I wouldn't. Nichrome ribbon tends not to twist evenly. But since you're twisting this to the max, I guess it's not the worst thing ever. Don't do this to me. I need my point three. I would like either Canfall or Stainless Steel. That's what I like to use. Here we go. Here we go. always the spool I need. Isn't that weird? I think that's weird. Here's some point four stainless steel. We could use that. We could use that. We could use point four or point three. It doesn't really matter. So you know what? For the sake of for the sake of the video, let's use some point four all right. Use some point four stainless steel. Yeah, I found the thirty six. Yeah. All right. Geronimo, thank you very much. What's up, Tommy the Zombie? Awesome Coil Society. All right. So I'm going to take out this point four. And I'm going to get out about three feet. We'll do about three feet for one coil. And we'll see how far that gets us. And I give it a little stretch to straighten it. I'm just going to lock it into here and cut it off. All right. Lethal coils, what's up? So I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to get a bobby pin. All right, I'm going to get this bobby pin here. I'm going to put the ribbon through there. All right. Twist it around there. There's my point four on the bobby pin. All right. And now I'm going to put this into my drill. Here's my drill. I'm going to put it into my drill. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter which way I twist this, really. Um, you should probably remember which way you twist it, though. All right? And I'm just going to hold the other end with needle noses. And I'm going to twist the hell out of this. I'm going to go in the forward. All right? Yeah. 
Now, you want to hold a lot of tension on this. Not a lot. You want to hold good tension on this. You want this nice and straight and don't let go. But it's going to want to compress just like all our other twisted wires, all right? Just like all of our other twisted wires, it's going to compress. It's going to go in. And you want to let it go in, all right? You let it go in. Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like. It's coil class. Those are always in the title. So I'm going to be twisting this damn near to the max. So I'm going to twist it even more. All right, I'm going to twist it a little more. And I want to twist it until you see little, 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 little twists, like real little twists. Really, really, really small twists. Don't let go of the tension. I mean, those twists are pretty damn small. All right. And it broke on me. It broke right there. I probably twisted too much. Let's see if it's even ruined, though. It might not even be ruined. But it did go around the drill. Watch your face when you're doing this. You kind of don't want to go as far as I did then. That twist it where it breaks and you went all the way. And that's okay. If it does that and it bounces back and it gets a little tangled, untangle it and you could use this. It's fine. Because that's just the nature of the coil. Right? And now I'm going to cut it off my drill. And I have this twisted ribbon. All right, just one single piece of ribbon, twist it to the max. See them little, little tight twists? That's a piece of ribbon, a single piece of ribbon. Now. Now. I'm going to take 22 gauge, 22. You could take whatever. You could do whatever you want. You could do 18, 22, 24, 26. You could go lower. I wouldn't even go lower, though, or higher, I should say. Thinner. You could go thinner, but I wouldn't. I'd probably stay at around 24, 26, 22, somewhere around that. I'm going to take this wire. This 22 gauge. Clear out the drill.
and then twist. All right. So now I got a straight piece of 22. And then I'm just going to clap them. I'm just going to clap them with this twisted ribbon. I'm going to stick it in there into the drill. I'm going to do a couple rotations. And you're going to see what happens. Pat, what you're talking about, you could do whatever you want. Whatever. You could put two 26s, two 28s. You could put two 32s, two 24s. If you're going to do stuff like that, you could do whatever. You, that's what's great about coil building is you could do whatever you want. Nothing's right or wrong. You could do whatever. There's no rules. That's why coil building so great. I do what I want. Right, so this twisted ribbon. And there is a certain pattern that happens, you'll see. There's a certain spiral that starts to happen. You see it? You'll see. See that? When you let go, that happens. Right, pretty cool, right? And it's very easy. Now, I believe this is another blue eye goon thing. I believe. I'm not absolutely 100% positive, but I think the reef coil is a blue eye goon creation. All right. That three feet of wire got me far. That's that three feet of wire on 22 gauge got me damn near four inches. All right. So now what I like to do with reef coils is make stovetops. I like the stovetops the best. So let's just do it. Let's just do the stovetop now. We're going to take it right out of the drill. What am I doing? All right. So you remember? I bent that to put into my drill. Let's just grab this. All right. Grab that like that. Take the end. And I'm just going to spiral it around. 
just like this. Make that middle nice and tight. All right. It's going to spiral around to make a stove top. It's going to spin as I hold the middle. You have to flatten it out like this a bit. You can. I actually think I actually think point three would have worked better. But this is cool. bend this in here. And we'll install this after the next the next wire I want to show. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Simple enough. All right. Now, all right, let's do the next coil. The next coil would be. Where's my coffee? So where's my coffee coil? Did I drink it? No. That's not possible. All right. Green Mamba. The Green Mamba is basically a very small zipper very 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 small zipper used as a clapton now i was going to do maybe just one twisted wire which we could do we could do to start off You could use any ribbon, like I said, any ribbon, whatever ribbon you want to use, you could use. As long as it's a flat ribbon wire, it'll do it. 
I've done it with every single wire. I've done it with 0.8. You can do it with any wire. Anyone. It's the shape of the wire that makes that happen. And twisting it all the way. It could any single wire. Any single ribbon wire, you could do that. All right. So I'm actually starting to think if we should do the green mamba, if we should just do a twisted Clapton, because here's the thing is twisted Claptons, I can kind of show you what they look like a little better. I'm about to just do a twisted Clapton because we could still parallel it. Let's do that. Let's do a twisted Clapton. All right, twisted wire as a Clapton. Yeah. That's what I want to do. And that's what I want to do first. Let's do that. We might do both. We might do both. I want to show you something first. It wouldn't be right for me to jump right to a mamba. Hell, Billy Hick, what's up? What's up, anybody else that came in? Uh, seen... Brooklyn Coils, what's up? I've seen a couple people. Bones the Skater's here. WP Mac is here. Where's my mouse? Oh, really? Okay. Cool. Alright, see you later. See you later, mouse. Okay, there it is. <coughs> And Gunther's here. So actually, what I'm going to do is first we're just going to make a fuse Clapton with this. And then we're going to go on to something else. Something else pretty cool. All right. So what we will do is we're going to get 38 gauge. Let's get 38 gauge, all right? We're going to get 38 gauge stainless steel. You could use whatever 38 gauge you want. You could use 40 gauge. All right, 40 gauge, 38, 42 if you're feeling a little frisky, whatever you want. We're going to take out. About. Let's do this. What I'd like to do is set something up to hold this wire. Now, some people will, like, tie it on their doorknob. There's so many things you could do. You could put a nail on a table and put it around that, whatever you want to do. Let's put it this way. Up here on top of my thing, on top of my swivel stand, I have a little pin. You see that? I'm going to take my 38 and put it over that all right that's what's going to hold the other end i'm going to take the 38 and i'm going to undo it and unspool it at the same time right and i'm going to do about Four feet, four feet. So sorry, guys, if I'm not paying attention to chat. That's just how coil class goes. I'll answer questions at the end, but in order to teach, I'm going to concentrate on this because I get thrown off when I start talking about other stuff and people get confused. So 
Sorry if you're answering, asking questions and I'm not answering. But I'm going to take this. It's 238, so now I got two because it's on there and it's looped onto my thing. You can't really see that. It's very hard to see. Two pieces of 38 coming down. It's holding on the pin. And I'm going to take these 38. They're held tight. Cut the last thing that's on there. I'm going to cut that ribbon off of there. And I'm going to put both pieces of 38 onto this drill. Oh, that reef coil, I went the same way with the drill when I clapped it. So if I twisted it forward, I clapped it forward. Okay. It, I don't think it matters, but that's what I did. So if you want to try it the other way, maybe you get a better result. I'm not sure. Reef coil isn't something that I'm going to twist this while I hold this. I'm holding the wire there. I looped it over, twist it, and now it should be secure on there, right? I'm going to cut this excess little pieces off like that. And now I have two 38s coming out of my drill, and I'm going to pull it back until it's tight. Actually, this is a bad idea. I'm going to take the drill off of the vise. And I'm going to hold the drill. All right. I'm going to hold this drill. I'm going to put my drill on forward. And I'm going to twist. I'm just going to keep twisting. And when it gets tight, I'm going to move the drill in. All right. And then it's going to, it's going to go. You're going to see vibrations, and then the vibrations are going to be like no vibration. you got to move it in a little bit. If you twist it too tight and don't give it relief, it's going to snap and break. So you want to hold it tight to twist it, but you also want to give it a little or all that tension, it's going to snap. So drilling forward. Don't let, like, I don't want to pull my drill like three inches up or it's going to all spin up. You want to keep the tension on it. I'm looking at the wire. I'm looking at the 38 gauge. And what happens is when it twists, it goes like this. When it twists too much and it gets tight, this turns into a little vibration. When it turns into a little vibration, I let some tension down. I push in a little bit with the drill. Like the drill, I just go move in a little bit. It's going to vibrate again a lot. And then it's going to go real quick. It's going to go to a little circle. And then I let go a little bit more. I've tried to show this on camera before, and it just didn't work. I'm doing I'm looking at the wire and it looks like it's vibrating really quick and then it gets real small like that it goes back and forth and then it gets real small it gets real tight so I let go of the tension and then it vibrates again a lot and then it gets real small as it as you twist it it gets tighter when it gets tighter there's a lot of tension so it stops vibrating a lot just think of it like playing jump rope you're playing jump rope it's the kind of the same thing but if your friends move away from each other, you can't jump rope. It's not going to hit the ground. All right. They have to be the perfect distance. Kind of the same thing. And what the hell just happened? It's heard a weird sound.
and now my drill is very fast. Like this drill is pretty freaking fast. So I'm twisting it a lot, twisting it a lot, a lot. So this, let's give it, let's put it this way. This drill is two times faster than this drill. This drill is 1900 rotation. Oh, that sticker left. This drill, and it snapped. This drill is, see if it pops off, no big deal. I'm just gonna put it back on my drill. It's cause I'm talking while I'm holding it. All right, so all I'm gonna do if it pops off is I'm gonna stick it back in there. I'm gonna stick it back in the bobby pin. Grab it. Give it a little. And it just snapped again. This drill's too fast to be doing that. In fact, now that a lot's twisted, let's do this. It's probably good. I probably twisted it all the way. That's why it's getting brittle. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Maybe I am done. I see a lot of people do this and they don't twist it a lot, which is fine. I mean, it's not wrong. I like to see tight twists, though. I like to see very, very tight twists. Actually, damn. That's pretty tight. Let me get some better light so you can see. This is a pretty tight twist already. I think I want to just stop. The thing is, is I kind of wanted to show you something. Uh, we'll do it again anyway for the next coil. Kim Dixon, you got fucking detention. I'm fucking sick of this coming in late shit. You got detention. Nope, ain't having it. I gotta make an example of you, young lady. If you start coming in late and I don't give you detention, everybody's gonna start coming in late. So I'm sorry, but you gotta stay after school and clean the chalkboards and bang out the erasers because it's just ridiculous. All right, this is extremely hard to see. Only 38 gauge, too. See how tight the twists are? Hopefully you can see it. Obviously, it's pretty hard to see, but... Seventeen hundred RPM. They're seventeen hundred RPM. That's right. They're seventeen hundred. The impact is twenty eight hundred. And this one is twenty seven hundred. My impact's actually quicker than this. Okay. So just to, just realize that my drill's pretty quick. So you might have to if your drill is like a cheap drill and it doesn't twist that fast. You might have to twist it a little longer. See how tight the twists are? You can see the my fingerprint next to it. It's pretty quick. Pretty pretty tight. Okay, so I got that now. What will accentuate this twisted wire is um, you could clap in just this. You could use this. Like, I'm going to grab out. I'm going to grab some 24 gauge and make a single fuse clapton. All right. We're just going to make one single fuse clapton right now just because I want to move on to the next one. So, I'm going to take this 24 gauge. I'm going to get out about 12 inch. I'm going to stretch it straight. I'm going to cut it. It's way more than 12. I tend to do that. Okay. I'm going to take this 24. 
fold it in half, pinch, pinch, pinch. Let's come down here. Let's put a 90 in each one. Like that. I'm going to hook this on my swivel. So my swivel's holding it. Just to make things easier on myself. And we're going to do the parallel clapping thing. We're going to take this. We're going to put this into here. So we got two 24 gauges. All right, and to accentuate this twist, we could, you can just, you can just Clapton just with this twisted wire, just fuse Clapton with just the twisted wire. Putting a piece of round wire next to this is going to make it look that much better. So I'm going to do whatever I find first, 36 or 34. They're next to each other. Okay. Let's do... Let's do 34. I'm going to get out the same amount of 34 as I have twisted wire. Stretch it. Cut it. I'm going to put the 34 on one side of me. And hold it. And I'm going to put the 38 twisted on the other side of me. All right. So I have one coming down here, one coming down here. They're separate. They're not going to twist up below me. And I have both of them right here. And I'm going to slip them in between the 24 gauges where they're open. I'm going to make sure they're in between. I'm going to slide them down here. Do a little wrap around. Just to lock these wires in. And now, when you're working with twisted wire, you do want to go the same direction. All right, as I twist it. So I twist it in the forward. I'm going to clap them in the forward. All right, so I'm just going to parallel clap them. Parallel fuse Clapton. That's it. I'm just going to parallel Clapton both these wires together. And we're going to see what it looks like. I want to show you what this looks like, what, how I'm doing this. I'm taking the wire. I'm pinching both, pulling tension down. I messed up there. Can't see. I'll come back to this view. One second. See, I messed up there. I went over it. That's okay. Drill in reverse. Bring my fingers up. Pull some tension down. Go slow to get past this. Then when you get past the wrinkled wire, you could go faster. All right.
pull down. Right? I feel that they're twisted right here because how they came through my finger. So let's bring it back down again. They twist it up a little bit down here, but I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay. Now, sometimes at the end, this will happen. Oh, I'm at the end anyway. Ooh, there's a thunderstorm. There's a storm of brewing. Oops. All right, quite honestly, that's all I need. Now, I do have a little twist in here, so I'm going to grab it with my needle noses, put my drill in the reverse direction. Actually, no, keep it in the same direction. And I'm going to untwist this wire. Beautiful. This is going to be a nice looking wire. Cut off the ends and the bad stuff, and this is what I have. This wire will vape awesome. You don't have to do it with 24. If you do it with 38 twist, I would use 24. But if you did it with a higher gauge like 40, you could use 26. Pretty cool. It is easy. I make it look easy because it is easy. Just a little bit of practice. Okay. So I got that. I got that. We've done two wires in an hour. Less than an hour. I'm sorry. Less than an hour. Let's do the green mamba now. All right. So it's kind of the same concept. It's really the same concept. Twisted Messes mentioned me Sunday. I assume it was a good thing. Fucking better have been. Fucking better have been. He's big, but he ain't that big. <laughs> nah, he's always very, very cool. He's always very nice. He always gives me shout outs. What did he say? I assume it was about coil building. He's always, he's given me shout outs a couple times on a Sunday, not even knowing I was there. Mentioned, nominated me for president, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Twisted Mess has always been cool about that stuff.
Make America vape again. Okay. Let's do. Um, let's do the the. They call it the Green Mamba. I've never heard anybody else call it anything else, so I call it that. It makes sense. It kind of looks like a like a snake skin kind of deal, you know, kind of snake skinish. Um, so we'll call it we'll call it the Green Mamba. Why not, right? I think it's a cool name. I think it's a cool name. Um, actually, I've always quite liked that name. Um, I got that name because I've never heard anybody else call it that, but I did see a video where it was called that. So I said, okay, I'll take it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Same concept as the wire I just did. Same exact concept. Only what we're going to do, instead of using that 34 gauge there, Dude, I scrub the shit out of my hands and I still get blemishes in them. When you get, instead of that 34, we're going to use another twisted wire that's twisted opposite. So we are going to do reverse twisting on the other wire. Same thing, just reverse twist. Yeah, it was from Adam Vapes. Adam. Atomic, Atomic Vapes, Atomic Vapes, yes. We'll call it a micro zipper. Now, we've never went over micro claptons and coil clays. We are going to, when you do, we've done a micro clapton, right? And a macro clapton and a micro clapton. So micro is very small. A micro clapton, which we'll go over. Man, might be a good one for next week. I don't know. It might be a good one for next week. When you say a micro zipper, you mean a very small zipper. Now, we've done a zipper before. I'm trying to think of what RDA we put it in. I don't want to look back there if I don't know. What did we put a zipper in? I don't remember. don't remember. I think I suddenly remembered. We put it in this. What did the zipper go in? Who knows? Who knows when we did the zipper coil for coil place, what RDA did it go into? That's a braid. Remembers. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. That's not it. I think I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. Nobody got it. 
Muito obrigado. We put it in the support. The saper or the support from Wodafoe. Okay. This is what a zipper coil looks like. That's a zipper. All right, I think a better one's on the other side. Two twisted wires twisted in opposite directions to make the appearance of a zipper coil. All right. Zipper. A micro zipper would be very, very small. It would be like 238s instead of 226s. This was like 226s or something like that, I think. All right. So what if we were to take the zipper coil and clap them with it? Would be awesome. What if we were to, I don't know. Put it over a frame staple. We've done frame staples. What if we were to take some point? Let's keep it with point four. Let me not screw myself over here. What if we were to take some point four ribbon? Right? We'll get out some point four ribbon. We'll get out about twelve inch. Cut it, and we'll do three times. Let's let's prep our frame staple real quick. If you didn't see the frame staple coil class, go watch that. Right. So let's prep them. I'm also going to be using 40 gauge for the twisted wire. So what I'm going to do to prep my frame staple is I'm going to get 40 gauge off. All right. Prep this frame staple here, 0.4 ribbon, fold it in half. I'm going to do this quick, so if you don't know a frame staple, go check out either my frame staple tutorial, frame staple coil class, whatever. I got both. Pre-recorded tutorial or coil class. And just get up to the prepping. Take some 40 gauge. Wrap them up. Take the 40 gauge. Wrap it up again. About a half inch down. Pinch it. And slide it. And now let's get some, I don't know, I'd like to use, let's just use some 27 stainless steel, why not, right? Let's go crazy, do all stainless steel, and let's get out our frames. Two times the size of what I have prepped here. Stretch the 27 straight. Cut it off the spool. And we're going to fold it in half. All right. Wrap it with 40 gauge again. Right under the loop. I 
again at the 40 gauge about an inch down pinch it bring it down bring them out and there is a prepped frame staple six pieces of ribbon two pieces of 27 okay staple prepped now we're going to do 40 gauge um, I'm going to use this drill this time I think eh. nah. here's my issue I got this bench, all right? I got that bench, all right? Let's put a drill on the bench. Let's bring – man, I'd like to do this differently because I don't like that pin all the way up there. I don't like that because it's not – it's not level and it's just, it's weird. I don't like doing that really. Um, I'd rather have I'd rather have something like this. Ah. So many things I could do here. I could use two bobby pins. Put them on each side. I could do that. Or I could do this. I have, like, just something that has a loop in it. Anything. I could clamp that to the table. See? Just clamp that. has a loop in it. Clamp it to the table. Anything, you know? If it has a loop in it, it's going to be better. This is just like a key ring or something. You could actually just take a fucking key ring. Just a key ring. In fact, that's what we'll do, because everybody's got a key ring. Do they have key rings in the UK? Before I say that? These guys have key rings, right? <laughs> Okay, clamp that key ring to the table, boom. Take our 40 gauge now. It is important to remember which way you're twisting so that you do the other one the opposite way or this is all for nothing. All right, so I need that bobby pin back. There's my bobby pin. Where is it? Okay, bobby pin. <laughs> There's a bobby pin, right? Is that a bobby pin? It sure as hell is. Bobby. Drill. And I'm just going to do... Um, Coils, Adam, what's up? Coil bastard, I don't think I said hi to you. What's up, everybody? We're going to take this 40 gauge. All right. We're going to slip it into that key ring until it comes out the other side. Now, 40 gauge, you got to be careful with this because it is thin. You could do this with 38. It doesn't have to be 40. 40, let's put it this way. I'm doing 40 because it's a finer gauge. It's not going to be too strong on my frame staple. So 40 is going to be my favorite to use for a frame staple. Because it's not too strong. It's not going to mess it up. So I'm going to take my 40 gauge. After it's in the key ring. I'm going to pull it out. Excuse me while I whip this out. Okay. I'm going to cut it down here. And after I cut it down here. I'm going to take both the 40 gauges. 
put them into the bobby pin, fold it over the bobby pin. I know it's very hard to see, but I fold it both pieces over the bobby pin, and then I can kind of hold it. And I'm going to put the drill in forward this time, and let's twist. Okay, now I can pull this drill straight away from the key ring, pull it a little tight, not too tight, just enough tension to twist, and I'm going to do my forward twisting. All right, my forward twisting is going on right now. Here we go. There's like no way you can see that, right? There's no way you're seeing it. That's a lot of twisting for only four feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at it close up with these guys here. That's a pretty good twist. That's a pretty good twist. Let's do a little more. Let's look at it. That's an even better twist. A little more, and I'm going to be done. All right. Now, I didn't show this last time because the wire cut off on me. I'm going to take the wire. I'm going to pinch it right here, right before the key chain. I'm going to cut it. I usually like using scissors, but I'm going to cut it. Pinch this tight. Pinch it tight, cut it, and then unpinch. I just did that. Unpinch just a little bit. I messed up. I let the tension go, and I shouldn't have. Unpinch a little bit, and it's going to unwrap a little bit. There's going to be, when you twist something so much, there's a lot of tension. So it's going to want to twist back when you let it off. All right, and we don't want it to do this. All right, I'm just going to cut this off the drill, but I'm going to show you. If you don't do that, you're going to get this. You don't want that. You don't want that to happen. All right? Because it could do it quite a lot. It could do it a, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot. That's a technical term. A lot, a lot. But I'm just going to untwist this because actually, I don't, since it happened in the end, it's not that big of a deal. But if that would have happened a bunch of times in the middle, that would have sucked, right? It would have ruined the wire. Like, I probably could just cut this. But I'm stubborn. I want all the wire. I want it all. All right. I'm going to show you what this looks like. And what I'm going to do is when I do the other twist, see how tight it is? Just like the 38. You see that? It's actually a little less tight than my 38, I think. But that's okay. What I want to do is I want to twist the other way with two pieces of 40 and match that. You want to match that twist. If you need to twist it a little more, twist it a little more. So I'm going to twist it a little bit. Look at it. Make sure you don't over twist it right away. Twist it a little bit. I'm going to put them next to each other. I'm going to see. All right, twist a little more. Doesn't look right. Twist a little more. Put them together. Does that look right? Yes or no? If not, twist it a little more. Put them together. Does that look right? Good. It does. We're done. That's what I'm going to do now.
I'm going to cut the wire off of both sides. I got that one there. Put my drill in reverse right now. Drills in reverse. Let's do the reverse. Why do I do this to myself? Why? 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 There it is. I'm going to take my 40. Same thing. We're going to put this into the key ring. I'm going to pull it out here. Bring it past the drill. Take the 40. Either cut it or pull it off. We have both. I don't have both in my hand. Let's get both in our hands. Bring them to the bobby pin. Pull them both tight and wrap in the reverse motion or hold it and twist the drill in the reverse. Cut this excess off. All right, I'm going to twist this in the reverse for a little bit. Twisted it for a very little bit of time, right? Obviously, I'm going to have to twist it more, but just for an example, I'm going to take these. I'm going to take the wire. I'm going to put it next to the one I'm twisting. I'm going to look at them. Man, I'd like to show you this. Hold on. Hmm. My camera's not going to reach. It just, it's obvious it has to be twisted more. Let's just put it that way. It's obvious. Maybe I'll try to do something where I can show you this up close one time. I'd have to set it up differently. So twist more. Glasses. Check. Needs more twisting. Let's check. little more. I think this is the latest one. Check it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Come down here. Pinch. Pinch tight. Pull away from the drill. Cut this. It's going to twist in my fingers. Let it twist in my fingers slowly. Done. That didn't happen this time, that thing. Because I did it the right way. All right. Let's, I'm going to show you them both close up. These 
are my twisted. This is my micro zipper, 40 gauge. Hold on. Let me get them close to each other, even though you're going to see them close to each other on the build. One reversed, one forward. Same twists. Perfect. Like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Okay. One wire is going down that way. One's going down that way behind me. I'm going to take both. I'm going to twist them around one of the frames sticking up here. Just like that. I'm going to start here twisting. Doesn't matter which way, really. Start to clapton over that fuse, over that frame staple. Cut. Let's go close up. Um, oh, just so that my frame staple stays how I want it, I'm going to take one of these clips and use it as a slider. I'm going to put it right on there on my little... <gasps> Not good. Not good at all. Get in there. Oh, no. Look at that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything was going too smoothly. Something had to happen, right? Something had to happen. I didn't hot glue. That's probably one of the reasons that happened. Okay. I'll back up in a bit so you can see kind of how I'm holding this. Oh shit, that clip is broken. Yeah, I guess we'll call this a Mamba frame staple, right?
in order to get the full effect, you do want this to be a tight fuse. If you space it, you're not going to get the same effect, you know? A zipper looks cool because it's tight. What's up, Mr. Trent? Was Paul Casper here? What's up, Paul Casper? What's up, everybody? If I didn't say hi to you, what's up? See, I bring my fingers up, get them Clapton's untwisted, pull my fingers down. Good tension. You see how it looks like one wire right now? That's because I'm pulling down on tension. You see how? Look at my frame staple. Watch. See how it goes down a bit? I kind of made a mistake back. I'm not even messing with that. Sometimes you got to choose your battles with coil building. Like, is it even worth it to reverse that far back to fix that little mistake? No. I'm almost done. Stick a fork in me, I'm done. Cut it. Take this off. Put this off. That's my mistake. I didn't want to reverse and do. But the rest of the wire looking pretty spiffy and that would be a green mamba wrap Nice, right? All right, man. I hope I have RDAs to mess with right now. Please. Please, please, Jesus. Please, please, Jesus. Everybody say please, Jesus. I might have to take it out of there. couple RDAs. The question is, do I want to use them? Let's use them. Whatever. It probably would have made a good picture. I have the Goon LP 
and I'm going to see if I can get that stove top right up in this Goon LP in a kind of weird install. So the Goon LP is a lot like the Goon, only the, the clamps are sideways. It was a low profile Goon. Goon LP. Doesn't want to focus at all. There it is. Goon LP. And I'm going to take my stovetop. That is right here. I thought it disappeared. I'm going to take my stovetop. I'm going to cut the bend out of it here. Man, I could probably do more wraps in this. Let's try. Ah, I already bent it. It looks bad. Let's just keep these. Right? So I bent my leads. I have to cut this lead a little shorter. Same size as the other one. Get one lead in there in the positive side. And one lead in there in the negative side. Oh, I might have to do it this way. Which is damn near the same way. Oh. Come on, goon, don't fail me now. I don't think I opened that side big enough. I'm trying to do something like this, but I'd rather get it centered. But it's going to be very difficult with the way I cut the leads. Guys, I'm going to mess with this one later. I'm not wasting my time with this. You'll see it later. I'll show it to you later. I'm not wasting my time with that wire. It's actually one of my least favorite wires <laughs> ever done in coil plays. I'm not messing with that one. All right, let's do this. Let's get the freaking Kennedy out. I think this is the Kennedy V2? Kennedy 24. The Kennedy is definitely, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty old. But it's still just one of the best vapes you could get. It's bottom airflow. The top cap has no holes besides the one that you do the intake air from. And the screws on mine are bad. Kennedy, that is super dirty. Wow. I'm going to take my twisted fuse clapton. I'm going to take it around a 2.5, let's do. I'm going to do one, two, three, four wraps. Around a 2.5. People love the Kennedys, man. If you ever had a Kennedy, chances are you love it. It is definitely a cloud chasers, flavor chaser, atomizer. It's kind of both. 
you get so good flavor on a Kennedy. I definitely have to wash this one, and I'm thinking about later doing a sleeper in there. Man, I got dust on this. How cool is that? All right. I'm going to leave that lead in there because I think I might do a sleeper build, which would be wrapping this coil up while it's in the deck and putting it into there, which is difficult to do um, and not the most fun thing to do ever. Never do it. Let's get a three millimeter and let's wrap our frame staple. Now this is the green mamba wrap. Since it's a frame staple, it should wrap not that bad for me. And I'm gonna see how many reps I can get. I'm going to do a five rep. I could get a six, but I'm going to do a five. And this is what that's going to look like, and we'll find an RDA to put this in. Let me see if it fits six wrap fit better. Nah. I might have to just put this in. Damn. I'm indecisive about this one. Damn. That's where that is. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. All right, how about this? Now, this is a very underrated RDA. I loved this thing. This thing vaped very, very, very well. I freaking loved it. This is the Lynx RDA from DigiFlavor. So when the Faro came out, which I believe was Rip Tripper's RDA, the Lynx came out. The Lynx was kind of like the Velocity, where it opened up like this. But it channeled... It didn't, you see how it's not open? open? Like, there's no holes. You can't see any holes in it. It's because it channels down these grooves, and it's also bottom airflow like the Kennedy, and it shot up these. I 
love the vape on this thing. It's one of my favorite RDAs, the vape of all time. I love this RDA. I just stopped vaping it, but it like didn't leak and you have bottom airflow. The top cap though is very, very, very tight. And I just got new RDA, so I put it aside for a bit and never got it out again. But man, is it a nice RDA. And it's got some nice clamps too. Still a little dirty. I gotta wash all three of these out. So we'll put the green mamba in the links. I'm going to show you the difference between the two coils. I don't know if I said hi to Mr. Big J. What's up? All right. Man. Now this thing. I could definitely get this in by doing a little trick. Sure can. Just going to take so long to do. try a different trick. That might work. Big difference between frame staple uh, between frame staples and fralians. There's a big difference. Fralians wick better, and there's a little more spacing for the juice to get in. Frame staples are just very tight. It's a very very tight wrap, and it makes a big difference. It really does. I actually don't like frame staples anymore. I don't like them. I won't vape frame staples anymore. I actually I don't even make them for people anymore if they ask. I just say, how about just rallyings? Because it's such a difference. It's a big difference. Very big. I don't like frame staples. Ever since I've had rallyings, I've noticed a big difference. Frame staples are just too closed in and tight, and the juice doesn't get in like a frallyan. Frallyans have wicking properties. I showed alien wicking properties in one of the videos recently.
There he is. I got him in there. That is the reef coil. You could get these to look really, really cool, these reef coils. I think I might have botched this one a little bit. It doesn't look uniform. All right, everybody, we did it in two hours, guys. I'm so surprised I made it through this video. I was a little scared today. Fucking tired, guys. I ain't gonna lie. I'm fucking pretty beat up right now. I have... What did I do today? I... We did a roof at, after lunch. This is what I did. This is after lunch. So after I'm already halfway beat up for the day, what I did was we were sheathing a roof. We were putting plywood on a roof. I cut the plywood and ran it up the fucking ladder to the roof while the other two guys did the roof. They, they nailed it down and stuff like that. So after lunch, after I'm already beat up from the first half of the day, I start cutting plywood on the ground and then picking it up on the ladder, pushing it up the ladder until the second floor roof. Fifteen sheets, I guess. Fifteen? Yeah. Something like that. It wasn't too big. Addy J, what's up? So... That was my day. Actually, if we wanted to, I have a couple more minutes. I could show you the job I'm doing. If anybody follows me on Instagram and looks at my stories. One second. Mr. Mike Vapes. All right. I'll show you my stories. Ready? Here we go. Hi. Newark, New Jersey. That's a fun fight. Yeah. I dig that. Oh, I got to turn this down because I don't want to get copyrighted. I have to turn that down because that's me listening to a show. And... It's a pretty big show, but yeah, that's what we're doing. I'll turn it down in a sec. Yeah. Didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to turn the camera around, but yeah, we built that. I'm going to turn the volume up in a sec.
Fucking legend. What an honor it is to work with me, huh? Must be. He's the only Mark. What a fucking honor it must be. Could you imagine? No sound, huh? We had a tarp it for the rain. I said that there. I told him. I said, Mark, let's fucking go. I gotta do fucking coil plays tonight, man. I'll fucking leave you here. Let's fucking go. It's fucking 5:30. Coil play starts at fucking seven o'clock. Let's go. <laughs> I get a kick out of myself. That's okay. All right, everybody, listen. Listen. Just don't show my dad dancing. Where could I don't I can't do that on the computer. <laughs> it is going pretty fast. We had like we had like we had six people yesterday. So we had six people, four of which, five of which are carpenters. So come put your ceiling back up. Clayton, yes. Yes. Making one type of coil and go off and make another. Yep. Yep. No, we're not going over last week's coil class right now. We're going to do that someday this week, whenever I have time and I'm not fucking beat. Nope. Not now. I can tell you that. We will have a coffee talk sometime this week to do that, though. You didn't miss it. It's just going to be another day, guys. I am working 14-hour days in the fucking sun. 90 degree weather. It's going to have to wait. But yes, I am out of here because I'm going to bed now. I was actually debating on putting this off too. No, but I did upload that video yesterday, but it's not at the top of my thing. So, if you, yeah, I worked. I mean, we've been doing that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's been, I did like 10 hours, 8 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours, 10 hours. Tomorrow is going to be like a 12-hour day. Yeah. So. Um, whenever I could squeeze coffee talk in there, we will. I don't want to have to do two weeks in one. All right. So thanks for watching. It was fun. We got these coils done. Um, I guess the next time. Yeah, I guess. The next time you'll see me is a pop-up coffee talk. I'll try to put, like, enough of a warning. You know what? I mean, coffee talk isn't too straining on me, really. Let's think of something. Tomorrow's Wednesday, and then Thursday's the 4th of July. Friday would be horrible, right? Would Friday be horrible? Friday would be horrible. It would be horrible. Let's do tomorrow night. Let's do our coffee talk tomorrow night. Let's do coffee talk tomorrow night. Let's do Fresh O3 in like two minutes. Yeah. Fresh O3 is on. What's up, Chevy man? Trent, I don't know if I said hi to you. Let's do tomorrow night. All right. What's up, Drew? Tomorrow night. 
Justin Crabtree. We'll do that. We'll do tomorrow night. It's going to be late. It's going to be late. It's going to be like probably 9.30-ish. We'll get it. We'll get it in before before um, before uh, golf tea. We'll go on before golf tea. All right, golf tea comes on at 10:30 Eastern time. We'll go at around 9:9:30. All right. If I'm a little late, if I'm a little early, I'll put up a warning. As soon as I get home, I'll put up. You know, I'll be on it this time, just like I did today. All right. Be there or be square. Okay, there you go, Trent. Everybody, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'll talk to you. Guys, the messages, I will get to them. Been crazy. Peace.